Hello, welcome to yet another session of our NPTEL on nonlinear and adaptive control. I am Srikant Sukumar from Systems and Control, IIT Bombay. So we've started our week number 10 in a very interesting fashion talking about robustness in adaptive control. Robustness is a uh, sort of rather critical issue uh, for any nonlinear control. Um, especially for systems such as what you see in the background, which is like a spacecraft uh, orbiting around the Earth, any small uh, error or instability, uh, you know, in your control can lead to complete deorbiting of the satellite and you might lose it forever. Yeah. So robustness um, is a very, very key to uh, real performance. In fact, in reality, almost nobody is, uh, no applied engineer would be concerned about uh, asymptotic convergence and things like that. Uh, they really look for bounded performance around an equilibrium. Yeah? And that's essentially what most of the systems, such as what you see in this background, also do. Yeah, Because it's impossible in a real system with unmodeled dynamics, with disturbances and such, and actuator, um, inexact actuators, and so on and so forth, in order to, uh, to achieve exact asymptotic convergence. All right. So, um, such an idealized scenario is not possible. Therefore, robustness is critical. And this is the discussion that we are having uh, on uh, the nature of robustness that you have in nonlinear control. So, what we have seen until now is that uh, if you have a very simple system in this case, but in general, if you have a strict Lyapunov function for a system, yeah, that is a system with uh, v for which v dot turns out to be negative definite in the absence of any kind of a disturbance, um, then it can uh, we can actually show that in the presence of disturbance also we have rather nice performance. Okay, and what is this nice performance? How do we specifically quantify this nice performance? The first thing we can actually see is that your v function, uh, whenever it's outside a particular set, yeah, remember that v is always greater than zero. So the, the range of v is just this, so anything below this is irrelevant. So whenever it's inside this set, uh, sorry, whenever it's outside this set, the function v is decreasing. Yeah, and as soon as it gets into this set, anything can happen. Again. Doesn't matter. Right, uh, so that's the idea here. Okay, uh, so again, in this case, it can increase or decrease, but in the, sorry, in this scalar case, it it has to uh, you know decrease here and so on, um, very monotonically. But this is not generally the case for vector case for vector situations for vector states and so on and so forth. Therefore, I have shown you a more general plot. So once it's inside, of course, it can oscillate and things like that. Yeah. Um, here again, I mean, uh, you have to sort of understand that, uh, you know, I mean, anyway, I mean, the idea is a little bit of oscillation is anyway possible because, uh, you know, once you are uh, inside, you can sort of uh, overshoot here and then, you know, you can increase, go to the boundary, overshoot and things like that. All of that is possible. Yeah. So there is an oscillation possible inside this set. Yeah. But outside this set, it is monotonically decreasing. And that's really the idea here. And the same um, uh, sort of um, feature of the Lyapunov function is mimicked in the uh, pro performance of the error also. Yeah, the error also. The only difference being that V is uh, related to the error with a square. So V is E squared by 2. Forget, I mean, the scaling divided by 2 does not change too much of the property of the plot. Um, but because v is e squared, therefore uh, e can e can go positive and negative, therefore, and uh, therefore the sign is not captured in this plot, and that plot gets captured here. So the bound is just a uh, square root of the v bound, but it's on both sides of the uh, zero. It's on both sides of the zero, and if the e starts outside, it it again monotonically decreases because v decreases, e decreases. 
identical and it gets into this set and then it is allowed to oscillate and it can oscillate now the important thing to remember is that the solutions cannot escape this bound because if you get to the boundary at just instantaneously or immediately outside this boundary you are supposed to move inside therefore you cannot escape this boundary yeah this can again like i mentioned last time this can be analytically proven yeah so it will always remain inside this set. yeah so this is called a residual set the other important thing to remember is that the size of this residual set is governed by the control gain so it's inversely proportional to the control gain in general yeah not just in this problem but in general it is inversely proportional to the control gain and therefore by increasing the control gain you can reduce the size of the residual set yeah uh, although it's well known in control design also then it's not advisable to arbitrarily increase the control gain but up to a you know reasonable limit because increasing the control gain also increases the frequency of the control so in, uh, you know maybe the control may no longer be applicable and all that jazz but within constraints of what your system can do you can still push up the control gain to get smaller and smaller and smaller residual sets yeah so that you can get the performance of your real system for example the satellite uh, to within the necessary performance bound that you want so this is uh, one of the big big powers of the lyapunov method that as soon as you made a control design using a strict lyapunov function disturbance robustness came for free yeah you do not have to do this and you don't have to do this analysis at all and it's for free because you had a strict lyapunov now remember the problem that we have yeah in adaptive control we almost never have a strict lyapunov function you may start with a strict lyapunov function for the known case but as soon as you come to the adaptive control problem the uh, strictness of the lyapunov function is lost because you in v dot in fact the v dot that you get turns out to be exactly same as the v dot for the known case right although in v you had to have an additional term in the unknown parameter all right so this is i mean all of you remember this yeah so v can never be strict in adaptive control problem well it can be strict if you have persistence of excitation and all that nice stuff then you can create some strict lyapunov function for a you know for an adaptive control problem but Uh, more often that's not the case more often that's not the case yeah you that's why adaptive control theorists do not care about parameter convergence because persistence may not be guaranteed therefore you do not have strict lyapunov functions at least not in the setup that we have usually seen okay great so let's sort of uh, work this out and look at what happens okay let's look at what happens so for the same system i mean if I, i will i will write the e dot equations again so the e dot was ax plus u minus xm dot right and now because the a is unknown right i will use a hat x here of course xm dot is still known and introduce the good control term okay great what happens i now i have an additional term in the e dot what's my lyapunov function we add a term to the lyapunov function corresponding to the parameter error yeah and of course we have to find an update law for a hat very simple certainty equivalence method scalar system all of you have done this a thousand times yeah i hope by now uh, you have and so i populate all the terms e times e dot minus k e plus a tilde x and a tilde a tilde dot which is a tilde minus a hat dot so i have this guy uh and with this if i take a hat dot um, as gamma ex this term cancels and i'm left with v dot is minus k e squared now remember this is negative semi definite turned out to be exactly the same as the non adaptive case big surprise yeah we already knew this was going to happen okay this has always been the case yeah no exceptions excellent now what happens in the presence of uncertainties in the presence of uncertainties your 
E dynamics will have plus D of T, right? And that will propagate all through. Yeah. So simply stated, your V dot will have minus K E squared plus E times D. Again, you will get the same V dot as the non-adaptive case. Yeah. Even with the disturbance, nothing changes because I didn't change the control. I didn't change the adaptive law. I changed nothing. The only thing that changes is the Lyapunov analysis, right? Because I cannot change anything since I have no knowledge of the disturbance. So there's no question of changing anything. All right. So great. I have this V dot and now I continue my analysis. So I do the same thing minus K minus half E squared plus D max squared by two. And I get this expression. Now notice the key difference here. I write this as E squared and not as V because this is not V anymore. In the non-adaptive case, this was in fact my candidate Lyapunov function, but in this case, it's not. Yeah, it's just a piece of it. Yeah, it, because the candidate function also has this guy. Yeah, so this implies V dot is less than equal to zero whenever your e is greater than this. So this, uh, now, now if you look at this particular conclusion, yeah, this still seems to be the same. Okay, this still seems to be the same. Yeah, but where is the problem? There's a big problem. Yeah, I mean, problem uh, that crashed an airplane. Yeah, so big problem. Okay, so let's see what is that. Now I do not uh, make the, I will not be making the, actually I don't need this to, I can make this here. Yeah, I'm no longer going to be making the V plot. I only make the E plot yeah, because V plot is no longer uh, corresponding to the E, uh, the V and uh, the Candidate function V and E plots are no longer corresponding. So it doesn't make sense for me to make the plot for the V. Yeah. So I'm just going to plot my E here and time here. Yeah. Now I'll make the two boundaries. Right, these boundaries are basically uh, D max. All right, did I get this wrong last time? Yeah, this should, I'm sorry, huh? this boundary last time should have been 2k minus 1. Okay, so this should also have been 2k minus 1. 2k minus 1. Okay, so there was a two factor missing here. Yeah, all right. So here also, this is d max. I'm going to make this bigger so I can write a little bit more easily. So I have the same boundary if you notice, and the minus d max over. 2k minus 1 have the same boundary. All right. Now, what happens? If I look at the E plot, things seem okay. All right. Things seem okay. Because when an E is larger than this quantity, yeah, then E still, uh, then when E is larger than this quantity, then V dot is still negative. Okay. Notice. If E is larger than this quantity, V dot is still negative. Therefore, V has to reduce. Okay. So, if V reduces, eventually E also has to reduce. Because notice that V is a, a quadratic sum of E and E square and A tilde square. So, if V goes down, 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 because V will not stop going down until E is larger than this guy. Yeah. Until E is here or here, we cannot stop decreasing, okay? 
it may decrease in a non linear way or a, not a, in this case not monotonic necessarily yeah it doesn't matter if it decreases in a monotonic way or not that is not necessarily going to be the case yeah um, because in this case e uh, e beyond this requires v to be decreasing but v decreasing could also mean that this guy is decreasing and this is not for some time at least but in the long run this also has to decrease because the negative v remains continues to be uh, negative when e is larger than this quantity okay so this also has to decrease yeah so logically speaking e may start here it could increase but eventually it has to decrease okay, so it has to go inside this set so great i mean nice and inside this set of course any oscillations are allowed you remain within this set and all that why uh, well I mean, do you remain within this set that's also a question so let's try to answer that question also so but you do get into this set yeah this residual set that we this set that we usually call the residual set so you do get into this set so let's see what happens if um, if instead of doing this i do hit the boundary yeah now at the boundary again uh, as soon as i try to cross what happens uh, v becomes negative uh, v becomes uh, sorry v dot becomes negative so v has to reduce so very close to the boundary as soon as you're very near the boundary yeah uh, v becomes almost zero yeah as you reach the boundary v is becoming almost zero here right so uh, as you reach the boundary here v is becoming almost zero almost zero v doesn't change anymore so if v doesn't change e doesn't change yeah and then v becomes negative as soon as you try to cross it so therefore this has to come back in okay so this is again i am talking about it in words but i promise you this can also be proven yeah yeah this can also be proven so this thing works no problem yeah excellent i mean this is good to know right i mean i kept saying that there are so many problems and now i find that uh, you know e goes into this residual set in fact looks like the size of the residual set can also be controlled similarly using the gain k then you guys might ask me really what were you even talking about all right so let's come to the trouble part okay let's come to the trouble part now once it, as long as you are outside this set v is decreasing right v is less than v dot is decreasing negative so v is decreasing or non increasing at most so therefore um everything here remains bounded right because if you remember uh, so this implies e a tilde remain bounded yeah then you are outside this set e a tilde remain bounded right all nice because why do they remain bounded because v dot is negative semi definite so v is non increasing v is non increasing then whatever value you started with i mean you cannot none of the terms can go to a e or a tilde cannot go to infinity yeah because if you started with finite value you'll remain in a finite value set excellent now once you once e gets inside this residual set is when problems begin yeah because then also, anyway inside this residual set you know that e will never escape this set so it will always remain inside this set as long as you apply the control of course you stop applying the control no guarantee but if you continue to apply the control e will remain inside this set okay great and the second thing that happens is that uh inside this set uh, v is not necessarily v dot is not less than equal to zero okay v dot is not less than equal to zero now uh, when so what happens when uh, e less than d max over square root 2 k minus 1 v is greater than equal to zero sorry v dot is greater than equal to zero correct just just using this guy 
okay now if v dot is greater than e equal to 0 so v can increase it can either increase or stay equal to 0 and right? v can increase now the important thing to remember again again be very careful e cannot increase beyond this guy yeah, e has to remain in this set only right because i just said that residual set property it will remain inside okay but v can increase okay okay not unintuitive yeah not unintuitive the only thing that's happening yeah when when e is inside this is it stops uh, e from increasing beyond a certain point e remains in this cage sort of no remains in this cage but v because v dot is non negative and if v dot is non negative then v can increase all right and if v can increase but e cannot increase beyond a certain value what does it mean if i take these two into account that e cannot increase beyond a certain point but v can increase what does it mean implies a tilde can increase and there is nothing stopping it nothing nothing absolutely nothing stopping it because e is bounded here and as long as e is bounded here v dot is non you know non negative and if v dot is non negative v can increase and which means a tilde can increase nothing stopping it never ne not never does it have to become negative definite because why why did all this happen because v for this the same v for this adaptive case is not a strictly apollo function the v dot has only the e term and not the theta tilde term or the sorry or the k a tilde term if the a tilde term was present here this would be the same analysis as the as the previous case and no issues everything will be nice and bounded but here as long as e remains outside the outside that is here everything is bounded because v dot is negative semi definite therefore v is non increasing so if you started with finite value you remain in a finite value yeah but as soon as e gets into this residual set the nice cage which we made for this e we want the e to get into this cage yeah and we know that it cannot escape this cage but we know that inside this v dot function which contains e becomes non negative which means we can increase the only way we can increase and e uh, without having e increase itself is if a tilde increases and a tilde can increase to arbitrary values now yeah nothing stopping it yeah so this means essentially that a tilde can in fact go unbounded so what do we care <laughs> we care because it contains the the control contains a hat and a hat is just a tilde with a constant offset right a hat is just a tilde with some constant offset nothing different than that right so once i have this issue i know that if a tilde goes unbounded i know the control goes unbounded all right so the issue is uh, although the with this implement if you implement this control then your error will go into this nice residual set which you can even make smaller with the increasing gain but interestingly you may end up needing infinite control yeah and as you can imagine no no actuator can provide infinite control yeah uh, until now in all our adaptive design all the terms are bounded you know boundedness of these things was sort of a given we didn't even have to think about it but just in this very simple scalar case with one disturbance term added here you see that uh, my control can go unbounded to maintain a residual set or a bounded performance for the tracking error and this is you know if nothing mind blowing yeah this is if nothing mind blowing i mean i cannot uh, the first time i saw this i was i mean absolutely baffled uh, as to how i could have missed it or how is this even possible am i doing the i mean am i doing the calculations correctly or is my professor doing the calculations correctly maybe he's completely wrong yeah but 
this is it. I mean, just a very, very simple uh, sort of a situation, seeming situation, and, and things become ugly. And therefore, you can see why there was a big hiatus in adaptive control and with such ambitious project of implementing the controller on a fighter jet and, you know, um, and even with such a simple scalar problem, uh, you know, my disturbance and with some basic disturbance, bounded disturbance, uh, things go all right, then you can imagine why a lot of folks would have given up adaptive control. I'm sure if some of us were there in, you know, trying to fly the fighter plane, we would have given up adaptive control ourselves and moved on to other, you know, cooler fields, you know, maybe learning. All right. Uh, so anyway, so that's the idea. Uh, this is this is the problem. Yeah, uh, simple problem is we do not have strict Lyapunov functions in adaptive control. Even if we started with a strict Lyapunov function in the known case, in the unknown parameter case, it becomes a non-strict Lyapunov. Yeah. So what are the solutions? So one of the solutions is called parameter projection. The idea here is, until now, we've assumed that we know nothing of the parameter. We do not know anything about the bounds of the parameter and such. Now, this is again not super realistic because in, in, in a real applied engineer has a very good idea of what kind of parameters his system, his or her system would have. Yeah. So it's not unnatural, it's not unreal uh, to assume that um, you do know a little bit about the parameter values. Uh, especially if you know the bounds and the parameter values, then what uh, we do in adaptive control is to uh, make sure that the parameter estimates a hat remain within this pre specified bound. Okay, and that directly tackles the problem, right? Directly tackles the problem because what is the problem in our adaptive controller? That the parameter goes to infinity or can go to infinity, and it has happened. Yeah. Um, so, uh, and what we want to do, we want to attack this. So what do we do? We make sure that the parameter uh, search in some sense, right? AHAT is essentially searching for the right value of the parameter, right? It's an update law, but in reality, what is it doing? I mean, in fact, a uh, lot of the earlier adaptive control laws are gradient descent laws, right? So essentially the AHAT uh, dot is designed in such a way so that you just uh, search for the true value of the parameter. Now, if I know a range for the true value of the parameter, it makes sense that I search in this range only, you know, not search everywhere. Yeah? That's what we do. We do parameter projection in adaptive control so that the A hat lies between the given bounds. Yeah. Uh, again, no guarantees of convergence to true value. It yeah? doesn't matter how small your range is, but still uh, it does not allow the parameter to go to infinity and therefore you know, guarantees that you have robustness. So this is what we will look at in the upcoming session. Uh, that is how to do parameter projection. At least one way of doing parameter projection in adaptive control. Uh, there are quite a few ways, but we will look at one way. Right? Excellent. So, what did we look at today? Uh, we looked at the issue at hand. That is, uh, you know, how to uh, do basically uh, or what happens when you do adaptive control on a very simple scalar system. And then there is disturbance introduced into the system that we cannot account for. Uh, then we saw what happens to the adaptive performance. We um, almost stared at with disbelief that uh, and found that um, you can have unboundedness of the parameters and therefore unboundedness of the controller and the whole system uh, can get ruined. Yeah. If you're not careful about implementing a robust adaptive control. So uh, implementing an adaptive controller without uh, some kind of robustness to disturbance uh, can be fatal. Yeah. So obviously this is what we are going to look at in the subsequent session. So I hope you'll join me in this interesting session. Excellent. Thank you.